presents The Good Morning Show. You welcomed him into your home and hearts. Now, here's your host, Lee Kiner. He traveled the world, taking us along for the ride. But the great national pride of the Welsh has helped them keep alive their tradition in literature, in history, and in the arts. He fought the good fight against racism, advocating for women's rights, and he pushed for literacy for all. Lee Kynard loved his books, he loved to tell stories, he loved his community, and he loved bringing the news to you. Tonight, we remember and we honor a pioneer, a colleague, a friend, a legend, Mr. Lee Kynard. We join you tonight with heavy hearts as we say goodbye to a man who paved the road in television news for all of us. Lee Kynard passed away this morning, surrounded by his family at Moses Cone Hospital. He was just shy of his 87th birthday. Lee loved being in front of the camera. He loved tracking down the story, and he definitely had the gift of gab. Tonight, we want to honor his work as we look back on his career and talk with some of the people who knew him best. So Lee was a member of the North Carolina Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame, well earned. He retired from WFMY in 1999, but he was never far from his news family or the events of the day. Lee actually came back here to the Good Morning Show 60th anniversary, and tonight we remember Lee Kiner and his beginnings. Wall is coming down. He's taken us from the destruction of the Berlin Wall, a small island in the Irish Sea, to every corner of the world. From bringing rays of light on snowy triad mornings, to timelines of the 20th century. Lee Kiner Jr.'s fascination with radio and journalism took off in 1939 with a visit to the World's Fair. Wow. It was called the World of Tomorrow. While at Pfeiffer College, he wanted to work in the industry so badly, Lee got a job at a radio station sweeping the floors. He wound up on air and part owner. From there, 22-year-old Lee became the chief of the radio and TV section for the Army making movies about the troops. The only thing I knew about making movies was watching movies, right? But it just seemed to come natural. A true natural indeed. Lee came to WFMY News 2 in 1956, in front of the camera and behind the scenes, like when he was the studio floor manager when Richard Nixon came to Greensboro. And all of New York press came into Studio One and sat down and Nixon did his thing and I, you know, I gave him the finger, uh, this finger, you know. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, you sit back in awe because this man is being asked important questions. Lee launched the Good Morning Show in 1957, the nation's longest running local morning show. He was responsible for designing GMS's format and is the reason you still see weather in the mornings across the nation today. Weather was important if you were married and had babies, you had to hang diapers and other stuff on the line, okay? From Egypt to Estonia to Eden, North Carolina, Lee always knew the story was about you. It was the story in the street, told by the people in the street. After retiring in 1999, he focused on education, getting people to vote, and raising money for those in need. Through it all, broadcasting was in his blood. I love the business. And we love him, making it a sad night, saying goodbye to the Good Morning Show guy. You know, Lee got lots of offers in his life to move on to bigger cities and brighter lights, but he said, why would I leave the triad when everything I need is right here? And we're so glad that he didn't go anywhere. Born in 1931 in Concord, North Carolina, Lee's dream as a boy was to be part of the growing radio industry. He was infatuated with the big personalities of the airwaves, people like Grady Cole, Edward Murrow, and Lowell Thomas. Lee was also an avid reader and author. As he made his transition into television, he admits he and many others who pioneered this injury industry had to figure out what it was really all about. Lee was the youngest announcer here at WFMY News 2. He was stopped in the hallway by the station's program director in the fall of 1957 and asked if he'd like to anchor the Good Morning Show. Right place, right time. For 43 years, Lee Kynard was the face of WFMY News 2. He was the Good Morning Show, but he also co-anchored the 6 p.m. newscasts from 1984 to 1999. 
The word retirement must have had a different meaning to Lee because after his tenure here at News 2, he found a new gig. Lee joined Guilford Technical Community College in 2000 to help create the Larry Gatlin School of Entertainment Technology. He also served as the executive assistant to the president until April 2014 and was the institutional historian. There, he also oversaw the Office of Marketing and Public Information. Now let's talk about the love of his life. In the summer of 1949, Lee met Anne Courtney Milton on a blind date. It was love at first sight for Lee. Three years later, Lee and Anne married in 1952. They have three children, Beverly Ann, Valerie Grace, and Lee Kiner III, and several grandchildren. Lee Kynard also helped someone else very near and dear to our hearts here at WFMY News 2. He mentored a young reporter just getting her start in the business, a woman who eventually became his co-host. You know who I'm talking about, Sandra Hughes. Sandra truly loved Lee. She shares some of her favorite memories with WFMY News 2's Maddie Gardner. Right now we are broadcasting from the Lee William Kiner Jr. Studio here at WFMY News 2. But more than 60 years ago, Lee was in here laying the foundation for us. And right by his side, another famous face and voice, that of his friend and longtime co-host, Sandra Hughes. He would say, uh, Hughes, you were good today, but tomorrow you got to be better. I said, oh, okay. There aren't many people who knew Lee Kynard like Sandra Hughes knew Lee Kynard. So, I mean, I'll miss you. Mm. I really will because Thank I've enjoyed working with you. Thank you. I really didn't know how to be a broadcaster, how to be a journalist. Lee Kynard taught me day to day things that I should know and things that I should do. To take this opportunity to welcome my good friend Sandra Hughes to News 2, the 7 o'clock report. Your hosts, Lee Kynard, Sandra Hughes. We know and love the duo from the 25 plus years they spent together on screen, but it's what happened behind the scenes that says the most about his character. From memories after the long work day ended. He made us get up at six o'clock in the morning <laughs> to go to work with these interviews. We worked all day long and got back to the hotel at dark that night. And I just passed out in my room on the bed. He came and knocked on the door and said, Hughes, he'd always call me Hughes. He'd say, let's get out and get something to eat. And I think I just won't sleep. To refusing to bow to racism and hate. And here's the thing that I did not know then was that people were going after him saying, why are you working with this woman? You know, she is not a woman you should be working with. And he was fighting those battles on his own. He didn't even tell me that people were coming after him like that until it was long over. And that just, it broke my heart, but it made my heart. It, it made me feel for him like you can't feel for anyone else. No, there aren't many people who knew Lee Kynard like Sandra Hughes knew Lee Kynard. And it's that very reason that makes it so hard to say goodbye. And this tape is called, You Never Can Say Goodbye. Oh. <laughs> okay. And make sure you're tuning in tomorrow morning. Sandra is going to join me on the Good Morning Show in the 8 o'clock hour to talk about the fond memories she has of Lee and how she'll remember her friend and co-host. Today's passing came as a surprise to all of us. WFMY News News Jansen Silver spent his day talking with people who all knew Lee Kynard in a different way. And Jansen Lee was considered family really to anyone who knew him. That's absolutely right, and I'm here at UNC Green Place that meant a lot to Lee. He loved this place, he was dedicated to this place, and there's even a street on campus named after the man himself. All day, like you said, I've been speaking with people who have memories of Lee. Some have known him for decades, some just got to know him in the past few years, and that includes Bill Price. Lee started going to Bill's uh, monthly. He had a meeting of radio friends, but Lee would go there. Again, you heard he loved radio, so about once a month, once every two months, they would meet, and that is where their friendship grew. Made your day better uh, just to have a chance to encounter him uh, once a month, every other month or so. And just to um, be a part of his world and have him in ours. Others like our own Eric Chilton and Shirley Fry knew him for much longer. And while the time frames of knowing Lee might be much different, the impact he had was the same across the board. And that is why it's so hard to let go. We're all melancholy, of course. You, you see the passing of a legend. Uh, but all you have to do is look around here. Everything that's here now is because of him. So 
His spirit lives in these walls and in this community for 50 more years. Lee was one of those people that I always call forever people. I thought he was gonna always be with us. And as you heard, Lee is always with us in a way. And coming up in just a few minutes, you're going to hear more from Eric Chilton and Lee Kynard himself. Just last year, they took a walk down through downtown Greensboro. And that is a conversation between those two gentlemen that you are not going to want to miss. Lee once told me that one of his favorite parts of the job was meeting you at home and getting to know you. He had a whole lot of experiences with you guys and you're sharing them on social media. Here's a couple that really were interesting. Karen said, when I was a kid, I saw him at King of the Sea restaurant in Danville. I felt like I had met a superstar. He was so kind. Another part of my childhood gone. Prayers to the family. And we have Linda who said, when my mom was in a nursing facility, he came to visit her. She'd watched him for many years and that visit made her day. We've got April. I grew up watching him on News 2. I remember when I was in the second grade, he came to a program that my school chorus was in. He interviewed me and my classmates. He was really nice. He truly cared about people. We will all truly miss him. And that one is very true. He did care about people, telling us often that that was the reason he loved his job here. Also, Latana said he will be missed. He was well known in my household as well. Getting our family ready for work or school in the 80s, I knew it was time to get my day started in second grade when I heard his voice on News 2. He is the man that started so many of our mornings. It's hard to think he won't be here to start anymore. Now, we would like you to keep sharing your memories with us. Just head over to the WFMI News 2 Facebook page. If you have any pictures, we'd really like to see those as well. Just example after example after example of how Lee Kinder impacted lives. Well, much more to come tonight as we honor and remember television news pioneer and friend Lee Kynard, man who will be missed by so many. Our thoughts and prayers are with the Kynard family tonight. We'll be right back. The wall is coming down, and the sounds of the hammers destroying it may be striking the first blows in the building of a new Germany. Is there one thing that you're going to miss about this environment? You know, uh, I really don't think so. I mean, I'll miss you. Mm. I really will because I've enjoyed working with you. Thank you. Lee Kynard, a legendary news anchor in the triad, was a man who made a mark on people everywhere he went. His presence was always felt and his impact on the community was like no other. Lee Kynard passed away this morning at 647. He was just weeks away from his birthday. He would have turned 87 years old on November 5th. Lee and his wife, Anne, recently celebrated their 66th wedding anniversary. He died at Moses Cone Hospital, surrounded by his family. North Carolina lawmakers are remembering Lee Kynard. Congressman Ted Budd said this. Over the decades, Lee covered some of the most important and historical times in American history. The triad community mourns the loss, but the legacy surrounding the father of the Good Morning Show will not soon be forgotten. And Congressman Mark Walker also put out a statement saying, During eventful decades of change for our nation, Lee was a steadfast and trustworthy voice for our community, always advocating for a better life for all. For many in the triad, he will always be the first and best memory of journalistic excellence. Such a lasting impact mm -hmm. that he had. Not only did Lee love journalism, but he was also fascinated by how TV and radio work. He was really a lover of everything about the technological age, always growing his knowledge of the latest innovation. Eric Chilton talked with him about where that passion came from a few years ago. The birth of television is a dramatic story that obviously began centuries ago when scientists started tinkering around <laughs> with physics, you know. But I saw my first television at the New York World's Fair of 1939. It was called The World of Tomorrow. Lee Kiner, the Dean of Piedmont Television, had what can only be called a lasting impact on the triad, one that went beyond our TV screens. Walking through downtown Greensboro, he remembered the big stories like the civil rights sit-ins. That marked the beginning of uh, News 2 
as a news entity. It also marked the introduction of local TV news as an important aspect of our life because here was a story in the streets television could cover. When you think back to that, and that event was so huge in our history, did that fundamentally change how we did news at local TV stations? We had no idea coming from radio what TV news was supposed to be. I took my television program and interviewed people that I wanted to learn things from. You're a charming man in person. You're wonderful on television. From Maya Angelou to Charles Kuralt, Lee Kiner sat down with the best of them and brought these larger-than-life figures right into our living room. But the fun of it, the reason we all got into this line of work in the first place, is being out there talking to people and covering the country. But you know, most importantly, he brought himself a trusted news source. The wall is coming down. A weatherman. Meet our live color radar from News 2. A world traveler. I'd like to give you an idea of what it's like in downtown London on a Friday afternoon. And a personality that will live on in the hearts of viewers. Lee Kiner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hundreds of you are sharing your condolences to the family, but also sharing your fond memories so many things stick out when I'm reading through them. Mm -hmm. um, people are calling Lee trustworthy, reliable, a pioneer. Friendly. Friendly. That was one of the big things. You felt like you knew him just through the TV screen. Right, and you look at everything we're talking about, his span over the years here at WFMY News 2. He was here for 43 years, but it wasn't just his time here at the station. It was all the years and beyond, and he continued to touch lives even during his retirement, but he truly didn't really <laughs> retire, did he? He always loved to be busy, and he did a whole lot of things here at the station. He read the news, he read sports, and he also did the weather. Tim, did you see those graphics? <laughs> that color radar? That's right, and famous for the magnetic boards, right? And, and Lee, there was a great quote I saw today from Lee about why weather was important. He said, if you're married and you have kids, you need to know what the weather's going to be so you know when to hang the diapers up on the line. And isn't that just a perfect thing? You need to know how the weather's going to impact you. And I think that's a great lesson for anyone who tries to tell folks what the weather's going to do to keep in mind in the years to come. Thanks, Lee, for all of that advice. Here's something you should know coming up in the next couple of hours. We have a lot of weather going on, honestly. It's pretty quiet right now, I'll attest to that. Just a little glow still shining in the sky, but change is coming here. We have a front that already slid through earlier today, and this is a clue I'll show you. 35 mile per hour wind gusts right now in Boone. None here yet, but those winds are coming. They will start to increase, and this is the overnight hours, a busy map, but wanna show you a couple things. Wind gusts in the mountains could be extreme this evening from 50 to 60. Here at home, anywhere from 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts are a good possibility through tomorrow morning and even into the midday hours. These are not warm winds. They're coming in from the north and from the west. This is kind of a bit of a winter chill that's trying to arrive a little ahead of schedule. These are wind chill temperatures and this is overnight tonight, feeling like around 10 in Boone. And when you wake up tomorrow here, no matter where you are, you're feeling similar to the freezing mark right there in the upper 20s to low 30s. That's the wind chill factor to keep in mind if you're going out and about for Sunday services tomorrow morning. Those winds could gust at times up to around 30 miles per hour. The actual air temperature right around 39 to 40 throughout the day. It doesn't warm much. We're in the mid 50s. That's well below our average of 70 for this time of year. A lot of sunshine to go around, but again, it does not feel all that warm for Sunday. I want you to know this for Monday colder temperatures. We're down around freezing. It's very likely that we will have a frost. So tomorrow, prepare to cover those plants before you head to bed, and that'll help them out Monday morning. Tuesday and Wednesday are dry and a little bit warmer, and then we'll talk about next week as we get closer. That's it for right now. We'll be back right back in just a couple of minutes.
made a big difference for a lot of uh, riders in North Carolina, I have to say that. But he's also made a huge difference for people who wanted to explore that world of the written word, but were locked out of it because they could not read. That's why Lee has always championed Reading Connections. It's a program in which tutors work one-on-one -on -one with adults who want to learn to read. As we continue to honor Lee, we have to talk about Reading Connections, an organization devoted to helping adults improve their basic literary skills. It was near and dear to him. Lee Kynard was instrumental in helping promote the message and vision of Reading Connections, yet another example of his lasting impact on the triad. I decided to learn how to read because I come down with cancer four years ago and I couldn't read at all and I wanted to read my Bible so I could go to heaven. And I saw it on the Lee County show, you announced it, and I got the number and I called Reading Connection, and they come forward and I've been in school for about a year and a half. Now I can read my Bible, I can write checks, and I can read the paper, and I can even read a book, any kind of book. You are Thanks. a sweetheart. <laughs> Give me a little sugar here. Mm. Julie, that story. That's not that great? Yeah. Lee Kiner changing lives. The organization started out as an information and referral hotline service for other literacy programs in our community. But after growing interest and great demand from adult students, Reading Connections began providing one-on-one -on -one instructions just to adults with significant literacy needs. We'll be right back. We continue to honor the life and legacy of Lee Kiner, the longtime news anchor here at WFI News 2. Lee was a man who made a lasting impact on the people he met. He was a pioneer of news and a friend to everyone in the Piedmont Triad. Lee Kiner passed away this morning at 647. He was 86 years old. He was just shy of his 87th birthday, which would have been November 5th. Now, Lee and his wife, Anne, recently celebrated their 66th wedding anniversary. He died surrounded by his family at Moses Cone Hospital. Lee was summoned to active duty a few months after he and Ann said their vows. Through his military service, he was given the opportunity to work in television and film. Stationed at Fort Bragg, Lee produced a film showcasing the Army's first atomic weapons demonstration. After that, he worked with Armed Forces Radio and TV in Georgia. From a young age, Lee Kynard was fascinated with the world of television. His interest grew into the broadcasting field after a family trip to the World Fair in New York in August of 1939. While in high school, Lee spoke into a microphone for the very first time. He appeared on a weekly production created by his class. Lee got his education right here in the triad. He holds his undergraduate and graduate degrees in English and a doctorate in education from UNC Greensboro. Getting a good education was of the utmost importance for Lee, not just for himself, but he stressed that importance to really everyone he met. Now, throughout his career, he had written three books. They are very interesting, too. Lee published works, including a book about the Good Morning Show. He wrote about a textbook for the Guilford Technical Community College and a book about North Carolina called Behold the Beauty. Lee's 40 plus years at WFI News 2 made him a local celebrity and made local news an important part of the community. The civil rights era, the women's liberation movement, and the Vietnam War were issues that not only drove changes in society, but also in broadcasting. The North Carolina Association of Broadcasters recognized his contributions to the industry by inducting him into the association's Hall of Fame. Six school bell awards presented by the North Carolina Association of Educators attest to his service to education. He's received the Order of the Longleaf Pine, holds distinguished awards from UNCG as well as, as Pfeiffer University. He is a recipient of the Brotherhood Sisterhood Citation from the Piedmont Triad Region of the National Conference for Community and Justice. People who knew and worked with Lee are sharing their stories. Some have knew him for decades, others just got to know him over the past few years. And though the time frame might be different, his impact is the same. And it's hard to believe that he's gone. Made your day better uh, just to have a chance to encounter him uh, once a month, every other month or so. And just to um, be a part of his world and have him in ours. We're all melancholy, of course. You, you see the passing of a legend, uh, but all you have to do is look around here. Everything that's here now is because of him. So his spirit lives in these walls and in this community for 50 more years. Lee was one of those people 
that I always call forever people. I thought he was going to always be with us. Yeah, sadly he is not. And so many of you here at home are honoring your memories of him. Uh, one of the things that we keep hearing over and over is how you watched him as a kid growing up. Let's see, Lord right here said, if you lived in Greensboro for a while, then you know the name Lee Kynard. He seemed like such a genuine, nice guy, instantly respected, and he delivered the news of the day to the people. To me, he was like a Walter Cronkite that came right here from Greensboro. I would completely agree with that. Now, if you're wanting to know more about Lee, we also have a lot more on our WFY News 2 Twitter page. You can see some pictures and a slideshow of all of his work throughout the years. That is right there, including information about how his journalism fascination took off, like in 1939 when he went to the World's Fair. And of course, we've got our own staff who's tweeting about him. Tim Buckley loved this quote from him, that weather was important if you were married and you had babies because you had to know when to wash the diapers and hang them on the line. That is the reason he said we have weather in the morning show, by the way. Please from Egypt to France to Australia, Lee Kiner traveled the world all in the name of journalism. He loved it so much, he started a documentary series chronicling his travels and research of places all around the world. I'd like to give you an idea of what it's like in downtown London on a Friday afternoon at about 520. Here's another shopping tip for you. When you come to Stockholm, the major department store is called the NK and it's located right here on this corner. That's a koala bear. We had the thrill of finding our first koala bear, not in a zoo, but in his natural habitat in a forest preserve on Phillip Island, about 100 miles south of Melbourne. According to the historians, the forefathers of the Estonian people first arrived on these Baltic shores and began building their homes some 5,000 years ago. Well, I'll tell you one thing. We certainly are enjoying your hospitality. You got a lovely cottage and a nice farm and some handsome cattle and horses up here in the uh, highlands. That's a good life, isn't it? We Americans think of New Zealand, I guess, as mostly wilderness, but New Zealand also has its tourist resorts. Queenstown is located in the southern part of the South Island. You know, Lee's travels were not only a joy to him, the, he also brought a lot of culture to places of people who can't always travel there themselves. Right, so you can look at that. That's what New Zealand looks like, wow. and we can live through it through Lee's eyes. Thanks for everything, Lee.